Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule of Waves 2 as Germany, episode number 81 or 82, I actually, I don't care. Anyways, it's over 80. I'm surprised we got past 80, but here we are. I actually also forgot the WASD works, but I'm so used to using that in other games now that I instinctively used it and it works. That's very good. Good job, Frederick. Um, I think our game plan here has just... It doesn't make sense. Um, I don't know what exactly I was thinking of doing. Okay. Taking half a second to think about it. I do know what I wanted to do. I wanted to defeat the enemy at range. Uh, I wanted to defeat them with my battleships defeating theirs, as normally happens. The problem with that situation in this case is that we're not necessarily better than the enemy in this one very unusual circumstance. Uh, so it's not necessarily a good idea for us to try to engage them. We should use our massive carrier advantage to our advantage. So I think what we're going to be doing is launching coordinated strikes to try to overwhelm the AA that is obviously very powerful, very, very potent. I know that because, hey, it's, it's mine, right? <laughs> and... I think that that's our best bet, honestly, is just to launch overwhelming waves of torpedo and dive bombers. Hopefully that does the trick. That's my hope. Uh, until that happens, we probably just do a game of standoff. I mean, every one of my vessels is capable of doing massive damage, but it goes without saying then that likewise with theirs. So, uh, let's keep the destroyer actually in front, just as a possibility. You see, we're not doing that well. Wait. Um, I think the game had a bug when we loaded back in. Probably because we have ships with the same name or something, I don't know, but... Apparently, their Donnervalden and mine just suddenly spawned right next to each other or something. Very confusing. And actually, we got a good hit on the Stoles de Kaiser. So basically, we just still want to retreat, though. I, I still think that this is the wise move is just to get out of here. Do not tempt fate. Uh, we may even just push our battleships forward in order to do this. And I think our light cruisers are, it's safe to just push them back. In fact, the Stoschel Swine and stuff, those guys are kind of, uh, unfortunately, kind of useless after this. If we get torpedoed, I will be very upset. So yeah, this sudden appearance of destroyers is obviously very unusual. I think just to be very, very, very safe, I think we'll do a turn together, execute a battlefield, turn away. And honestly, we should probably be doing the same with everyone anyway. That's just exactly what I'm saying, is that should be our game plan, is to retreat. So we'll probably just start pulling everyone away. But they, they basically had, they spawned, yeah, I mean, look at this. They spawned um, destroyers in, like, the most optimum position, directly adjacent to our, our battle group. Um, I can roleplay this. I can roleplay this. We can roleplay this, that they, we had um, a mutiny, a group defecting and they waited until the battle they like we were betrayed and i think it generally i would think that this would make sense i don't know i mean i i, I think generally the side the mutinies is <laughs> usually well i actually don't know how did mutinies i was only just right now weighing in my head what, what would who would be more likely to mutiny or defect would it be a group that was part of the democratic forces defecting to the autocratic? I don't think so, although that's the case here. So probably it was just a, an implant and uh, they, it got by our security. And I like, I feel like that's okay as long as we role play that the democratic group, the Republic, the German Republic as it is, the basically this is essentially the, the Weimar Republic, but you know, not in a bad form. The Weimar Republic was not successful because it was just built upon ashes and it's just the worst situation to, to, to suddenly spawn a government uh anyway uh the weimar republic or i mean in this case our prince whatever republic whatever the 
name of it. It's the German Republic. The uh, Krieg, no, <laughs> the not the Krieg, but the the Rhine Republic. So, anyways, I think that the they're so trusting and stuff that they, uh, you know, this is just un an unfortunate consequence of them being very trustworthy. So we'll actually send the Stachel Swines down uh, down here, as long as we can avoid taking torpedoes, which. For the love of God, I don't know how, but somehow we've managed to do so far. Now the question I have is, did this teleport, was this actually a new group? Are we still fighting all their original destroyers as well? It's quite possible, in which case that's not good. And the Stern de Nordens is uh, taking some other hits as well from the Foyer Drecker, it turns out. Okay, well, no bueno. Let's get the Donnervald in to deploy smoke. Supposedly there's, see this is the strange thing, where the heck are you? I I have no idea what's going on here. But we appear to have avoided the torpedo onslaught. So let's just make do with the best with whatever we have the best we have got right now. Is Arminius back in here? It is. Okay. Let's turn away, turn away, begin our full turn away, get the smoke to deploy. And the social swines also just deploy smoke, so we're just gonna do a, we're gonna fade back. Get these guys up to squad max for their maneuver. And you are deploying smoke. You are. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the other people are even near us. Oh my God, they're over here. So we probably had two ships with the same name or something, I don't know. Hopefully whatever one, whatever this happened, however this happened, hopefully it is resolved if I have to cut to another episode. Okay, good, the Slickting is inflicting damage on the Graf Zeppelin. We again just don't, I, I hope that, I don't know what happens to the cap if your carrier is destroyed, if they are just deleted from existence or if they wait to run out of endurance first. Could be either of those. Um, we're just gonna close steadily here with our fleet. We don't need to get super, super close, but knowing that we will turn away um, to actually launch means that we should be moving towards for as much as possible. And we did, I think, set my cap to minimal. Which we don't need basically any cap anymore. So let's just keep an eye on how things are going with the carrier. Yeah, so I do want to ready these group of dive bombers. This does not appear to be readying. Oh, let's get eight of them ready. How about that? <laughs> I don't know if that worked. I don't think so. Okay, so the Donner Valden and the... Something's bugged here, but... Um... Just want to take a look at what these are. Yeah, these only have... These have three five-inch guns. So we don't really want to go up against the Slickting class. It's kind of like a... Seems like a bad idea. So we're just going to keep pulling back here. I think we'll even pull back with our destroyers. Although, you know, with, with these Sturmbringers, I know that they have a lot of torpedo armor, but they are a little bit exposed. We're going to go for it here. We're going to go in and hopefully get some damage in on these Sturmbringers. At least forcing them to fade away. Pull them back. So we're losing the battles here, unfortunately. But again, our advantage is now going to be in the air. So we should be reacting accordingly. And honestly, it'd be a good time to engage, frankly, if we were launching our, our strike force right now. I see some people, these are just on cap. Okay. It's very, very, very strong cap. Which, uh, I don't know when that will change. We don't have enough forces. Did we already launch forces? What's the... I, I don't often reference this huge list of ships, but let's take a look. So we have a group, like, let me see, can't sort, okay, well here's a group on cap, damn. Naval strike, where are you? Spotting, flying, oh, we already deployed our forces, great. So that means that they're already getting ready. So, I, did we already do a coordinate? Uh, I think we did, and that's why it's gonna take a very long time. Okay, fair enough. So it looks like the eight I did select eventually are starting to equip themselves, prepare themselves for the fight, which is good. 
Um, this is going to be a rough, 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 rough engagement. The Sturmbringers have moved in. The Sturmbringers have moved in. Okay, that is interesting. When we're going to move the Stachel Swines in, this is going to be a, a risky gamble. But I'm going to try to get all my forces, except for the Valkyries. The Valkyries I actually want as pure fleet support, because they have great AA, they have great surface guns. Everything about them is wonderful. <laughs> so, turn off this... Um, we don't have any rear-facing guns, which is, you know, obviously by design. <laughs> so I sh I'm obviously having a hard time with this. My own situation is... I should never retreat, but... So we will probably do some funky stuff here. Like a fighting retreat. So that at least we are able to engage partially. And the Sturmbringers have already committed, which we might as well take, try to take advantage of by going in and getting some torpedo hits. So, it would be our, our best chance to try to do that, I think, right now. And we may lose some of our um, Stashful Swines here. What is the point of pursuing right now? I'm actually trying to just get torpedoes even off from my Stashful Swines, which have, yeah, six torpedoes per side is nothing to scoff at. Uh, I think that these guys should be getting ready for for their big engagement, prepped for their big date. I think we'll just continue, unless they completely full turn the other way, we, we look like we're gonna have them. Yeah, I want the arena to move a little bit further back because yeah, we basically want them not to be, not to be uh, <clears throat> targeted first. We are now able to engage, this is good. This is actually good. So we, we actually didn't fully plan this. We're just playing this by ear. But we've actually lured the Stormbreakers in to only forward firing guns. Now that's still effective from them. By that I mean that they're still firing two of their three guns, which is pretty good. And they've narrowed their, their profile, which can, you know, can make things a little bit more difficult. So, um, I mean difficult for us to actually target. So I, I think it's not necessarily a bad thing on their end. However, it's going to hopefully make our job a little easier as far as targeting them for torpedoes. Uh, yeah, we're just going to continue at maximum available speed for all involved here. Looks like they're shifting back up north. We're easily going to get this hit, though. Um, yeah, I wanted these guys to pursue the other ones, but they may not have the opportunity to do that in the end. All right, let's see what happens, though. Sternbringers are coming. And here, we're going to have to start launching immediately. We're going to start losing these guys out of our... Damn. Well, let's fix that. I might also start uh, individually disengaging some of these folks. Okay. Now, by the... How are you out of our... Oh, my gosh, damn. Okay, uh, who is my primary... Is it the... Yeah. So let's prepare to launch torpedoes. We're in position. The Stormbreakers are not slow by any means. So this is actually tough. But the Grotherwall should tech... It should have a solution. There we go. I was going to say it should have a solution on somebody. Good. Okay. Continue all efforts. And then let's actually pull her off directly. Give her one turn to just accelerate on out of there. That's not really what I wanted to see. Okay, well, anybody who's able to engage should. Still have a fair number of torpedoes going that way, and if nothing else, this is being effective in the one way I wanted it to be, or one of the ways I wanted it to be, that we're causing some disarray in their lines. That is good. So Kaiser Penguin, you guys should move forward. I don't know how you guys end up... You know, the, the heaviest armored somehow are getting to the back, and that's not what I want. Okay. 
That's just not going to help me. Main reason is we're not going to be able to launch torpedoes. Hmm, this is interesting. Uh, I don't know if any of these are going to hit. We're going to switch directions here. Yeah, so it's probably not going to go well for us. This thing, so we're, okay. The Gewehr, we're also, wait. No, that's the Grotherwald. Get her out of here. No, that's the Grotherwald. Okay, can you launch any torpedoes? Because you're in very, very bad shape. Okay, good. Oh, she can't move. Well, I guess we'll just get the these guys out of here. I, I mean, uh, okay. Well, we can launch some torpedoes at the the other ones, and I don't know how this all works, but I'm kind of hoping that if nothing else, we can um, cause some damage for our planes before they get there, which. Hopefully they get up soon. I see end strike. So they're... Yeah, I see another end strike. So I guess we're assembling. Assemble the planes. But yeah, this is a, a little bit premature. It'd be much better if we were doing a one-two punch into the actual uh, fleet while they're trying to flee the airplanes. That would be the best. This makes sense to me. I'd rather it be on low, frankly, but I'm just going to go ahead and launch anyway. Yeah, you know what? We'll just pull back. <clears throat> and I guess we'll pull back the Aloy as well. Not going to need them much against the fighters, but basically it's a it's a lost cause to try to pursue. Uh, these guys are turning away. It's fine. Basically everything's fine. So we'll be lacking a lot of torpedoes for the second follow-up engagement, but <clears throat> if we're using torpedoes with our destroyers to hit sinking ships, we've already won the fight, so it doesn't matter. Interesting. So now we want the arena and the slot skiff to kind of drift backwards. Get the heavy hitters to the front. Yeah, because we're still taking hits. And we're not dishing any hits out, which is frustrating. And their Valkyrie classes are coming. Actually, if we're able to stop their Valkyrie classes with our social swines, it's a fight that they're not geared to win. They're not equipped to win that one, necessarily. But if they can win it, it would be a great, great victory for us. Yeah, so they're Val the Val our Valkyries, I mean... <laughs> are successfully starting to engage the Satchel Swines, <clears throat> which makes sense. Okay, we at least got two hits on the Sturmbringers. These are the most threatening. They have three, we only have two. And I think I would say that those are the most threatening ships in the battle line. About equivalent to the Stoles de Kaisers. So that's fine. I mean, hey, we got actually, are all those three hits? Okay, two 16-inch hits and a 17-inch hit on the same Sturmbringer. That is good news. Very good news. We don't want to actually charge them, we just want to present a nice fighting retreat, so let's make sure that we remember that that's what we want to do. Our destroyers are slowly making their way over here as well, and perfect. Our, our flight is underway. They are on the way. I might want to flip around and head back south. We are obviously giving up the wind here. Um, oh my gosh, bridge destroyed from the slicting of all things. I think we'll pull them back. Yeah, I think we'll just slowly start pushing back that way. Which is going to facilitate, I think... Oh, nice, another... And it's on the same one. This one's actually taken a few big hits. Which is very... I mean, we'll take them. Oh, what, what was this? Air combat, 11 friendly, cap, attack, one torpedo bomber? Interesting, they still have something in the air, perhaps. 
Nonetheless, here comes ours, our group. I really hope we don't get hung up on the sinking ships like the destroyers. I really hope. Okay, they have a belt hit. We didn't penetrate, and I, that's also something to consider that our 16-inch guns, are they even penetrating the Sturmbringer armor? Sturmbringer armor is pretty impressive. <laughs> is it better than the Solstikaisers? 13 and a half, 5. 12, 5. So, no, the Solstikaisers are still the most potent, which means that the Sturmbringers are probably a good ones to bring down. They're not glass cannon by any stretch of the imagination, but, like, the armor scheme is better on the Solstikaisers. But the weapons are the same. So we should take out the weaker armored, same offensively potent, even like one gun more offensively potent. So while we're just waiting, I mean, this is just buying time for our fleet to get in there. So now that we're actually there, let's begin our pull away as planned. And Grotherwald, believe it or not, is actually doing us, uh, buying us some time, really. You can see that they're. They are focusing on her, they are targeting her, and really unnecessarily, she's already sinking. Interesting, enemy aircraft. Where are these enemy aircraft even coming from? Really, really, really hard to believe that the Graf Zeppelin was able to get off any aircraft with us pursuing. I know for a fact, since I was the one who decided the mission, that they have no... It's really interesting. I don't know where these aircraft are coming from, but um, could they just have flown around for a while? Is it possible that the light, the I'm um, sorry, the the ship we left in flames and utterly destroyed is not actually destroyed? It was able to launch? No, it's impossible. It's impossible. I think 50% superstructure damage, and you're not allowed to launch anymore. Okay. Uh, well, we'll just. I think, I'm glad I, I hit spacebar, but nothing happened. Yeah, this is actually still, this is 14 dive bombers. Where the hell did these guys come from? Like, really nowhere. Okay, but we're now approaching enemy ships, and hopefully this overwhelms, as I've been hoping, really hoping, hopefully it overwhelms the AA. So, that's still the hope here. Slow these guys down a bit. Letting them drift back. Again, we're just going to drift back. We're going to drift back. We don't actually have to completely disengage. We just want to slowly disengage. And we are definitely approaching with a lot of stuff. Got another hit on the same Sturmbringer, who's just absorbing these hits. It's I have really built some very good ships, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, another hit on the same Sturmbringer. Nope, this is a different one. All right, so we, we're doing well now. The, the balance of things has shifted a little bit, at least. Yeah, another hit on the lead. I'm really hoping to see these turrets drop, but unfortunately, knowing I, I know myself how heavily I armor these turrets to prevent exactly that circumstance from happening. So, okay, we got a hit on, oh my god, my head, I, my head literally snapped back in my chair and hit, hit the back of it, I was so frustrated to see that, like you gotta be crapping me. Okay, th this is nice, I would not call this a Corvette, but... Probably slightly misidentified. About as... I mean, besides mistaking a carrier for a Corvette, I think mistaking a, a battleship for a Corvette. Like, what are these things? 40,000 tons? How do you mistake a 40,000 ton ship for a Corvette? Sometimes, like, the... I don't know how the misidentification of it is just random. It randomly grabs another ship type. There should be some limits. I don't know how, if you're the one who's dropping a bomb on something, how you, getting that close, could possibly misidentify a huge battleship. I mean, these are not just almost anybody. You probably pick almost anybody who knows even what the what classes are, what battleship, I mean, what the different ship classes are. They could probably tell you from an altitude of 2,000 feet, I'd say, or whatever, that 
this is a battleship, or okay, at least this is not a Corvette, if they understand the difference. These are naval aviation, these are pilots, they're trained. <laughs> Come on. Do not insult my intelligence. Okay, unfortunately they are returning fire effectively and effectively against our Kaiser Penguin. Otherwise, no bomb hits. Ah, please, 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 please. Okay, the Valkyries hit by the torpedoes is not what I want. Hey, look at it. It's great that we're hitting the same Valkyrie with three torpedoes, but you know what I would prefer? I would prefer that we hit the ships which are actually going to decide the fate of this battle. That's what I would prefer. Fire started on the Kaiser Penguin. They've actually disabled a turret as well. Have we done anything like that? Unfortunately, not yet. Yeah, they, their ships unfortunately look pristine. Two aircraft destroyed, one aircraft damaged. So we're we are losing more ships, unfortunately. Okay, this is good. This is good. 16, 16, and 17. All in the same middle one. So he's, definitely, he's definitely taking a lot of damage. The Grother Vault is just sitting there and taking its punishment. It is absorbing a lot. So good. We actually have done other more hits against the Graf Zeppelin. I assume at least that whatever carrier-based actions are going on, that will be the last carrier-based actions of for the enemy of the of the battle. We should also remind ourselves to keep checking on stuff here. Uh, eight are ready to go. Do we launch them as well? No, I don't think eight by themselves makes a whole lot of sense to launch alone. So whenever we see naval bomb, uh, no, sorry, fighters, we're gonna put them on naval strike. But for now, let's just keep going. Good, we have more coming. Okay, the Souls of Kaisers took a belt hit. How is she doing in general? She did have a superstructure and a fire at some point, but she seems okay. I guess I should check crew quality. One or zero. Darn. More aircraft are approaching. Hopefully not going after the same sinking vessels like the Valkyries and the destroyer was just come on, it was just ridiculous. Um Yeah, taking more hits, unfortunately. That's why we're slowly pulling back, as I'm trying to say here. Let these let these ships do their all we need to do is keep them busy while the aircraft do all the work. Okay, we did take, unfortunately, a pretty damaging hit. But these guys are working as a... Well, they were. I thought that they were deploying smoke. Let me get them to deploy smoke now. Okay, 16-inch hit. That's on that middle Sturmbringer again. Another on the front. Well, but we're getting, they're, like, if you think about it from the AI's perspective, if I was playing as them, they're getting more or less the same number of hit reports. Seems pretty even to me. Lately. I mean, at first it was not looking good, so this is more or less the same idea, I guess. Uh, we hit the rear Sturmbringer this time. We have a fire start on our Stolz de Kaiser and another pass-through hit. Aircraft are still getting damaged and destroyed in this whole affair. Wow, good. Two 16 inches on this Sturmbringer, which has suddenly changed course. Oh god. I messed that up. Are these guys going to or from? Away. Damn it. Yeah, I don't, I just don't think we have, I don't even want to get those two ready because I'm hoping that even one more airplane will be prepared and made ready. So we can get a group of three. Alright, the Southerners have a lot of torpedoes, so we kind of want to mask them behind 
the light cruisers. Let's see what happens. What is going on with the Sternbringers? They are kind of in disarray. If it wasn't for like the so powerful backup that they have, I'm just, I was really hoping that my darn aircraft would get the job done. Really hoping. It would make a lot of sense for right now to turn east and start engaging their line while it's disoriented. It's very disorganized. I can see the foyer drackers and blukers are in the south. It's just so hard to do that after you've taken a lot of damage. And I just, again, was really hoping that we would have some success with our aircraft. And I, I would say very underwhelming success. Okay. Cry havoc and let loose the dogs of war. I think we're just going to have to turn in and force this issue, unfortunately. Not what I wanted to do, but they are in a bit of disarray, and I mean, I just don't want to not take advantage of a, tact or a tactical situation when I see it. So we're going to do it. Still getting some hits on the Sternbringers. I think that they're doing fine, unfortunately, but the fact that we're putting a lot of hits on target and they are not right now leads me to believe that we may be, this might be a, a small time of advantage for us. So the Grothrowald, after doing all that, nobly, by the way, has now sunk. So we'll turn north. We're going to put, unfortunately, kind of leave our ca carriers between uh, our own ships and the enemy. <laughs> I mean, sorry, yeah. The enemy will be between our own ships and our carriers. It's surely not ideal. Just can't imagine that eight dive bombers are going to make a big difference. Like, the earlier they make those differences, the better. But, okay, this is actually pretty good. Two 16-inch shells on their still disguisers. Just at least make them remember that they're in the fight as well. You know, we've had, uh, obviously, some not amazing early accuracy and all that. So, just open up to the east, continue with our battle line, and let's see how they form. I think we'll stop deploying smoke. Probably start moving in. Oh wow, just just in time for the Gawar to be hit by a Schlichting. Okay, they are circling north again. Interesting. Okay, I think this is good still. Have our Eloy and whatever, uh, Stasha Swine group stop deploying smoke. Alright, let's see how this goes. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about these guys. They're finally catching up with the Graf Zeppelin. And, you know, I just really, I have a very, very hard time imagining that the, um, Norvi is, <laughs> is any, and is in any condition to launch aircraft after all we did to her. Tons of heavy ammunition and through her. And I think some of it was high explosive, which is, which is just wreck those carriers. Okay, this is, I'm, I'm not that disappointed to see our, um, Slack Shif, our Arminius taking the... I don't want them to be the ones taking the fire. Much rather be the Stern de Nordas. Uh, but... 
I think that uh, if everyone shares the fight, it's even better. Wow, we got good damage on the Sternbringers this turn. 17 inch. And on a different one, 2 16 inch. We actually were able to disable a turret. So it means at least some damage is going down. I'm moving in with my destroyers preemptively just to... Actually, this is just like a... It's very much a preemptive maneuver. Just in case they decide to come too far north, I, I want to keep them moving back and forth, not getting a good direction or steady travel that would allow them to accurately aim. Hopefully the more zigzagging they do, the better. And this Sturmringer, I think is out of line, and we're going to go for it. Speaking of out of line, the slot shift has just got pummeled. I'm going to rely on her just to keep going. She's not in good shape. We'll pull her back a little bit more. Yeah, we'll pull her back a bit more. The idea has always been keep the Stern and Ordens, then the Kaiser Penguin, then the either of these, probably the Slokskiff one next. But if these guys have to pull off the line entirely, that's fine. Seventeen inch hit. Stoles is hitting somebody with their secondaries, the Stasha Swines. So this is where we want our Valkyries, but I know that I kind of left them in the back. Stasha Swines are going to come forward. Good. So it's not a very good time to be a uh, destroyer moving in. I still think that this is an opportunity though, so we're going to go in. It's never a good idea to be a destroyer in Tor Torpitz's navy. Yeah, we've done a lot of a lot of damage to the Sternbringer. I feel. Uh, unfortunately, they've done a lot of damage to our <laughs> to our uh, Blucher class. Okay, two more hits on the Sternbringer. So these ships are, I imagine, both in a bad way, but we don't know that. And if we can just focus on getting them out of the fight, that would be fantastic. Doing some damage to Slickdings, plus another 17-inch hit on the Sternbringer, and another 17-inch hit on the same Sternbringer. Okay. Ah, it's a slow battle. It's like this slow march, because we have to play things so carefully, unfortunately. Okay, so let's start getting, um, yeah, Naval Strike. Everyone's set up for Naval Strike. So, you can get four here, get six here. I'm just gonna grab the numbers here, and then if it's more than two, I will I will use them. So, put zero here and here because, uh, just put zero. Four, three is a bit low, but we'll use it. Okay, these guys are already ready. Okay, good. So let's just grab everyone who has somebody to something to offer. Your load can be heavy as well, which is actually a very powerful bomb. So again, we're going to transfer people off of cap and put them on attack duties, which means I, I think the Red Joker isn't he a fighter? Maybe he will have an opportunity to drop a bomb. So you're already ready, but let's just get everyone else ready. Good. Okay. So we're just, you know, doing the shift, shifting back. Wow, we are we are at a pretty aggressive angle. I think I'll flatten that out a little bit. Wow! Alright, that's usually the moment when you know you've sunk a ship, or at least removed it from effective combat. When you get the triple hit, it's like, okay, we've really done something. The Savant Tufel ship? I mean, well, I'm really glad we have this Foyer Drakkar, and we do have one more than they do. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably my worst <laughs> ship of all 
I mean, those and the blukers are just very, very outdated by this point. Nonetheless, getting a lot of hits. So we get one 17 inch on this guy, two more 16 inch, and then three 16 inch. So each of these took three very heavy caliber shells in the same minute. Slosh Skiff also, unfortunately, took uh, her fair, fair share of damage here. We're going to pull her back entirely. We'd, we'd rather not lose a ship. So you are deploying smoke. Very good. Hopefully the Slosh Skiff can just survive. I think one more hit and she'll go down. She's not in a good way. Okay, so far so good. We, she managed to avoid being hit one more time. She's being engaged by, yep, the Stolz de Kaiser. So then now the Valkyries are at least in front deploying smoke. That should be a little bit helpful. So far, we're getting a little bit closer with our destroyers. Yeah, we're raking these guys. So let's see, one other hit on this Sternbringer, and then three other hits, 16-inch hits, on this one, which is on fire. I imagine not doing very well. And if we force them to turn away... <gasps> If we force them to turn away, the advantage in terms of guns becomes entirely ours. However, the advantage in terms of torpedoes becomes theirs. This is a really tough, tough situation. And honestly, I was still hoping that eventually our uh, aircraft will make the difference. But they have not been very effective so far, and I don't know if we can even rely on them based on what I've seen so far. I'm just going to get into a position and start launching a lot of low speed torpedoes, flooding the side with... Uh... Is your rudder damaged? So you are not... You're going the wrong way. Look at your rudder is not damaged. I am so annoyed. I'm rather annoyed that, unfortunately, this guy's not listening to orders. And no, no, I mean, it's not even orders, it's common sense. Pull yourself off the line, you're so beaten up. Okay, Arminius near miss. Belt hit. Let's keep the pressure on, though. Again, if we can turn them, we'll be at a huge advantage. So we actually do want to kind of push forward a little bit more, but I don't want to get separated. Is this guy on fire? No. Just looks that way. He's on fire. Okay. Let's see what I, Yeah, we are turning them. We are turning them. <laughs> Arminius. First turret destroyed goes to our side. Okay, Valkyrie, come south. You guys have actually managed to weasel your way in. But that's causing, hopefully, them to do this battlefield maneuver turn. I could even... Alright, it's... I don't know if this has ever been executed. I don't know if I've ever done it. We're going to do it, though. We're going to execute the, the fighting mob. <laughs> We're going to move to line abreast and just get everyone facing with forward guns. Uh, it's not going to work very effectively for all the ships, but it should narrow our profile. One and two allow most, since most of our ships are forward firing only, should allow them to still pretty successfully engage. And we're moving in. This is it. This is our, our move. Is our, we're making our move. This is the moment, I guess, very soon now the battle will be completely decided. One way or the other. Just as the Graf Zeppelin gets chased off into oblivion. Yeah, so we have them on the run thanks to the brave work of our destroyers. It's always that way, isn't it? Destroyers lead the way. Dasha Swine's going to try to swing out to the outside. Everyone else is going to execute this secret command that I didn't even know about myself. Of course I did. I'm the Admiral. But it's kept in very high secrecy for just such a desperate event. We're now going to turn towards them with every ship and pursue them in this line abreast line of fire. Which, I, I mean, it makes some sense, right? 
They're not getting in each other's way. And they're not going to be able to return fire with very much. We will be able to isolate the slower ships this way as well, which I think we already are starting to do. It's a good idea for us to check speeds. It's just, this is, this is madness. But just like that, I think it's starting to work. Interesting. Even the Valkyries are getting in on the action. And way to the south, we finally have chased down the Graf Zeppelin. I guess her day is now done. And I was going to go on the east side of her, but in order to turn, um, in order to cap, like to do any kind of aircraft deployment stuff, she has to move into the wind, right? That's to the west. So we'll, just, we'll block her from being able to do that. Ah, uh, looks like the Slosh Skiff is going to make it just barely. And so is the Arminius. She's not even that bad. I, I guess what I'll do is specifically detach the Slosh Skiff. Because, like, another hit and she's done. So we'll just have her saunter her way out of here. And we'll have her do that at very low speeds. We'll make way to the friendly area. I mean, this is all friendly, considering the England and... Both England and uh, France are supporting the democ the Republic. Arminius only has a top speed of 9, but eh, it's going to allow her to engage for a couple more turns at least. Have the Valkyries start moving back in with the rest of the group. And our destroyers are pushing on in. Our Stashless Wind... Okay, we want the Valkyries on to the other side, the south side. But yeah, they're on, they're on the wrong side, unfortunately. Okay, let's hope that this works. Let's see what happens. Oh my god, oh my god, our luck is so crappy. Well, we don't know. I mean, there might be a lot of bridges destroyed on the other side of the field, but that's very unfortunate, obviously. Yeah, we are going to start taking hits. So this, it should be effective because it should put most of their guns out of you know, the ability to fire, but at the same time, maybe it's not going to do that. Anyway, I'm going to have to call this video to a close here. So it looks like we're destined for one last video. Was this tactic? I mean, I don't even know what the correct tactic is in this situation. It's just a total mystery to me. Nonetheless, um, we'll wrap this one up here and hopefully conclude this in the next video. Uh, yeah. I have no idea if this is working or not, but at least we'll be able to hunt down the uh, Sturmbringers and maybe even the Blugers. We'll see. I am kind of don't want to end it. <laughs> I kind of want, I want to keep going. We're going to be able to eat that one up. We at least separate the Stashel Swines, so we can send in our Stashel Swines versus theirs. Uh, destroyers are taking a lot of fire. Probably better if we actually have them deploy some smoke. But we are hitting the Sturmbringers at least. And we know the Graf Zeppelin's going to be suffering from a lot of hits. Yeah, there it is. Momentarily. Yeah, but even, like, seeing that the Blukers are taking damage and stuff, it's all good. That's good news. Not so good that our destroyers are getting hit, but hey, I mean, their only job is to basically set up the fight for the big boys. So... So, I mean, we are landing hits on the Sturmbringers. And this one is now, I guess, had a rudder issue. It's going to turn back into us. So uh, I said we were going to wrap it up, and then I, I just proceeded to move on for several turns. We do want these guys to torpedo the Graf Zeppelin. So hopefully they just yeah, launch torpedoes. Uh, I'll have them close as well. It's very important that we make sure that they don't have any cap or anything else for the rest of the fight. Which, I mean, I already assume would be the case, but... Where did those uh, bombers come from? We still don't really know. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to go ahead and just make everybody ready. I'll see you back for the next episode, So, for, which will probably be the last episode. How many times have I said that? For now, thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.